Okay, so the first uh, the first video I'm going to make is going to be on electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions, the chapter 15 material. Um, starting off, I'm just going to go through the couple of reactions you need to know and what they do and what they add. I'll go through the mechanisms in a little bit, at least the ones that are important. For now, all of these reactions are going to react with benzene. All you're doing with these reactions is sticking things onto a benzene. And what you add to the benzene depends on what's over the arrow. So, starting off, we have FeBr2 uh, and FeBr3. And all this does is it adds a bromine to the benzene. And now, there is nothing on this benzene, so it doesn't really matter where that bromine goes yet. We'll talk more about when it matters and where things are supposed to go in a little bit. And keep in mind, Cl2, FeCl3 is the exact same reaction, it's just instead of adding a bromine, you add a chlorine, so you just use what you need based on the question. Another reaction you need to know is, again, starting with benzene, but this time reacting with HNO3 in h 2 SO4. And what this does is it adds to your benzene an NO2 group. And now I'll mention this again in a little bit, but NO2 is a very powerful electron withdrawing group. And what it looks like is a nitrogen with two oxygens attached, one that's negative and one that is double bond neutral. Okay, And so that nitrogen would be attached to the benzene there very strong electron withdrawing group. The next reaction worth mentioning are going to be our friedel crafts reactions. These two are going to be really important and pretty much any synthesis you deal with that involves benzene will probably require you to use one of these. Let's start with the, e the easier of the two because it doesn't involve any extra rules. And that is your friedel crafts acylation reaction. Acyl, uh, acyl groups are another term for carbonyls, so double bond O's. Okay, so let's take this for example, and then we'll have AlCl3 under the arrow. Now, what you do is you look at your carbon chain and you ask, you, or you see where the carbon that has the double bond O and the Cl is. And basically all you're doing is now on your benzene, you're attaching that carbon here, to one of your carbons of the benzene. So basically, I could just redraw that whole structure, Cl, let's make that a bit clearer, Cl, and now just erase the chlorine and make the new bond to the benzene. So that's all there is to this reaction. It's going to add a carbon chain, and the carbon that gets added will be the carbon that has the double bond O and the Cl. Now, what if we want to add a carbon chain without the carbonyl? Well, one option is to still use this reaction, but then use a second reaction afterwards, and that is zinc mercury in HCl. And what that will do is it will reduce that double bond O, leaving behind just the carbon chain. Now, important po an important point to make is this reaction only reduces double bond O's that are a single bond bond away from the benzene ring. Meaning, if I had had another double bond O over, over here, the final product would have looked like this. The double bond O that was a, bond, a single bond away from the benzene got reduced, but this is too far away to be reacted with. And this reaction you don't have to worry about the mechanism of, so I'm not going to draw it out for you. Okay, now let's talk about the more complex, com uh, the more complicated reaction that adds carbons to your benzene. And that is your friedel crafts alkylation reaction. Alkyl meaning alkane. So in this case, rather than having the double bond O, all we have is the chlorine. And this is the one reaction whose mechanism I will go through because this is the one you have to be on the lookout for for little hidden traps on questions. So the first thing you need to know is that this AlCl3, let's draw that out, AlCl, Cl, and then another Cl. What this aluminum is going to do is it going, it's going to pull the electrons of the carbon-chlorine bond here towards itself. Okay? And what that will leave behind is one, a carbocation on the carbon that the chlorine was attached to, that carbon there, and the AlCl3 
will end up becoming AlCl4 minus. Now we don't really care about this, but the carbocation part is pretty important because this is why this reaction does weird things. If you remember what we learned in Orgo 1, carbocations aren't particularly stable and will always look to make themselves more stable if they can. And the only option it has for that right now is something called a hydride shift. If you ever see a carbocation and it is next to a higher degree carbon, for example here we have a primary and right next door is a secondary, you're going to do a hydride or a methyl shift. And the only time you ever do a methyl shift is if there are no hydrogens to shift. For example, if I had a carbocation that looked like this, well this is a secondary carbon next to a quaternary carbon, there are no hydrogens to move so the methyl would shift. But that isn't the case in this example. In this example, it's the hydrogen that will move. And we show that by showing the bond of the carbon-hydrogen going to where the positive is. And all that does for us is effectively switch the positions of the hydrogen and the carbon. And so what you get is now the hydrogen is over here and the positive is in the middle. And this is why it reacts differently from the other reaction I showed you. Because the spot where the chlorine is attached isn't always where the benzene will end up being attached to that carbon chain. Rather, after the carbocation shifts, that's the carbon that will get added to. So now what happens? Let's start with how benzene reacts to things that involve positives and, and the like. Well, we know that the only thing in benzene that has electrons that can go to a positive would be the double bonds. So one of these double bonds is going to go out and use its electrons to attack that positive carbon. Okay, and so if we follow our arrows, let's number these. Let's say this is, let's say I'm going to attach here because both of these carbons are equivalent. A, B, we'll number those, and then B has two carbons attached to it. So we draw out our benzene. And I said I'm going to add to this carbon on the, on the upper right corner, so it's going to be attached to B. Here is A that I said was on the benzene, and B that was on that. Now B had these two methyls attached, so one methyl, two methyl. And now let's add in our double bonds. Now notice, this double bond used its electrons to connect A to B. So A gave up the double bond but made a new carbon-carbon bond. B lost, or this carbon over here, lost its double bond, but got nothing in return, which means at the end of this, it's going to be positive. Now, for any electrophilic aromatic substitution reaction you deal with, this is the general mechanism. A double bond goes out and attacks something, leaving behind a positive in the, ben in the former benzene ring. And this is the really important part, because this is going to be a recurring theme throughout the rest of the semester. If you ever do a reaction, that temporarily loses arom makes your ring lose aromaticity, meaning here we were a fully conjugated six-membered ring that was an aromatic structure, and now we've become non-aromatic because carbon A over there is an sp3 hybridized carbon. It's not conjugated with the system. If this ever happens, you're always going to look to regenerate your aromaticity, and the way you do that is by running an elimination reaction. The electrons, some base which we can arbitrarily say is just floating around, is going to pull off this hydrogen. And then the electrons from the carbon-hydrogen bond go to where the double bond wants to form to make that structure aromatic again. Okay, And this is why every nucleophilic aromatic substitution reaction ends with, the, with a benzene and not a ring with a positive in it. Okay, But the net result would be this, even though what we had started with was a carbon chain with the chlorine at the end. And that's the really important thing I want to stress about these Friedel-Crafts acylation reaction or alkylation reactions. Always consider the carbocation first because it will move if it can and we don't want that to happen. So it, for example in a synthesis problem you should always use the acylation reaction, the reaction I showed you before rather than this one. This one in a synthesis can do weird things and we don't want to run into any issues. Why make the question more difficult? Okay, so those are the, the couple of reactions you need to be familiar with for this exam.